So today for my presentation, I'm going to be discussing the trade war between China and the U.S. Um, and how it has affected both countries and the global economy and the world in general. So for some background, um, since China began opening up to more international trade, in the mid-1990s, the U.S. and China have been huge trading partners. Every year, they have spent billions of dollars trading with one another. Um, the U.S. imports, out of all of their imports, they import the most from China. And China, out of all of their exports, exports the most to the U.S. So they are and have been for a while each other's biggest trading partners. Um, but because the U.S. tends to import and China tends to export, the U.S. has run up a massive trade deficit in 2018. The, this deficit was $378 billion. Um, this number isn't necessarily the amount that the U.S. owes to China. It just simply means that that's how much more they've spent in imports rather than exports uh, with China. Now this all gets a bit complicated with the 2016 presidential election in the United States and Donald Trump of the Republican Party um, came out and spoke about how this trade deficit with China is one of the major problems of the economy. And a big part of his campaign, a big part of um, what he ran on, was promising to decrease this deficit um, to China. And because of the intellectual property theft, forced technology transfer, lack of market access for American companies in China, and an unlevel playing field caused by Beijing subsidies for favored Chinese companies. Uh, these are some of the reasons that Trump believed that, basically, that the U.S. was getting screwed by China in their trading and wanted to basically combat that and fight China on some of these areas. Whereas China more believed that the U.S. was trying to prevent their economic rise because the U.S. was, I don't know, scared of being, of China being a true rival to them. So that's kind of where the animosity and the tensions started. And in here, in this graph, um, taken from the U.S. Census, we can see that the trade deficit has soared since uh, 1985. But really, as you can see, really, especially in the past 10 or so years, that trade deficit has really increased. Um, and yeah, that's part of the reason behind this trade war. So, how did it all start? On July 6, 2018, the U.S. placed 25% tariffs on various Chinese products, including cars, hard disks, and airplane and aircraft parts, things like that. Um, and China retaliated by placing 25% tariffs on the same value of imported goods, so... The U.S. tariffs, the goods that it was placed on, was worth roughly $34 billion, and the same with the Chinese tariffs. Um, and these included things they normally buy from the U.S., which is agricultural products, automobiles, and aquatic products. And this back and forth of increasing these tariffs continued to increase um, by both countries throughout 2018, expanding to... Um, more sectors and increasing these tariffs. Um, 
in order to combat this a little bit, however, China actually lowered tariffs for other countries because since the U.S. was their number one importer, um, they needed to sell their goods other places. So they lowered tariffs for other countries so that they could sell and buy between other countries easier when they couldn't with the U.S., now, the U.S. and China agreed to some trade negotiations in late 2018 and early 2019, but these negotiations broke down, didn't really go anywhere. Neither side was willing to compromise a whole lot, and so uh, tariffs continued to increase and expanded to even more sectors. Then, on January 15th, 2020, so uh, in January of this year, U.S. and China signed a phase one trade deal. It was meant to be the first phase in a series of trade deals that would eventually help them come to a compromise. Um, in it, basically, China agreed to buy more U.S. goods and U.S. agreed to suspend tariffs that they had planned on adding later in the year. Uh, however, due to the coronavirus pandemic, um, phase two negotiations have been on hold. Um, so it's kind of unclear how long this trade war will last. Phase one trade deal was meant to be just sort of provisional until they could really hammer out a lot of what they wanted to do with this trade deal. But they haven't started phase two negotiations, so we don't know how long this trade war is going to ki- is going to continue. Uh, this little chart shows just since July twenty eighteen the amount of tariffs that each side has placed, um, and yeah, it's really been escalating since July twenty eighteen. A tariff is a tax that is placed on imported goods and services, and it is paid by the importer, not the exporter. And tariffs are often used to encourage um, buying domestic products and encourage domestic manufacturing, but costs, these extra costs, are usually passed along to the consumers. So the price level is raised for the average consumer in the economy rather than the companies making the product. And because of this, tariffs often usually damage economies, especially with the tendency of many developed economies to be very interconnected. For instance, um, one of the tariffs that was placed was on steel, which um, helped the steel industry in the U.S., but damaged people and companies, sectors that bought steel for their products. So this damaged the automobile industry, this damaged the construction industry, and anything else that buys steel was actually hurting because of these tariffs. And so these sectors, their losses um, surpassed the increases of the steel and so it actually damaged the economy rather than helping it. However, uh, Donald Trump um, and encouraged by his trade advisor Peter Navarro um, have basically come out and said that these tariffs are going to be paid by the Chinese which is not how it works. It's paid by the importers not the exporters Um, and so they don't really realize that the impact of these tariffs is really going to fall on the U.S., not on China. Um, so since the U.S.-China trade war has begun, um, the stocks, the Hang Seng, the Dow Jones, and the Shanghai Composite, uh, the Dow Jones has mostly stayed kind of level, I guess I would say. Um, but the, uh, but the Hang Seng and the Shanghai Composite, as well as other stocks not shown on this chart, have taken a huge dive since the trade war started, just proving that this trade war 
and trade wars in general actually hurt economies rather than helping them. So what are the effects on the U.S.? Uh, So far, because of this trade war, the U.S. has actually lost 300,000 jobs. Um, The U.S. has also lost between 0.3 to 0.7 percent in their GDP. Kind of depends on which study you're looking at. Um, It's lost 360. It will lose $316 billion by the end of 2020. And U.S. companies have lost $1.7 trillion in their stock prices. And all of this is mainly due to this trade war with China that has been occurring since 2018. Um, This cost has been paid by U.S. companies and U.S. consumers. Companies have lost $46 billion. They have much lower, they've had to deal with lower profit margins. They've had to cut wages, things like that, Um, especially the farming industry. Um, For farmers, exporting to China was a $24 billion market, and they've seen dramatic losses in that due to this trade war. They've really been hit hard by it. Um, It is interesting to note, however, that while the trade deficit with China has actually decreased since the trade war started, um, only kind of marginally, though, um, The overall deficit for the U.S. has not. The U.S. has always been a country, or at least for the past while, has been a country that has imported much, much more than it has exported. And so the U.S. actually has a deficit, a trade deficit with 102 countries. Um, And so... Even though the trade deficit with China has narrowed, the deficit has just expanded enough with other countries to make up for that, that the overall, the average deficit in the U.S. has not changed. It has not decreased at all. Another effect is that President Trump has supposedly tried to use his better relationship with Chinese President Xi Jinping for his own political gain, supposedly trying to use it um, to help him win re-election. Um, and also, the Phase 1 deal that was signed in January of this year has not significantly made up for the damages of the trade war, again, because it was meant to be sort of provisional, but also actually due to the pandemic, um, because China was meant to buy uh, $200 billion worth of U.S. products. That was part of the trade deal, but because of the pandemic and the global economy has crashed, they haven't really been able to do that. So Basically, um, the U.S. basically signed an IOU deal um, instead of actually trying to make up for the damages that have occurred because of the trade war. So what have been the effects on China? So many American companies have moved production from China, their manufacturing production from China to other countries, such as Vietnam or Indonesia, um, other, especially Southeast Asian countries, um, because of, well, the lack of tariffs in these other countries compared to China. Um, Chinese exports have fallen by over 25%. Um, Industrial output growth has fallen to its lowest level in 17 years. Um, And the Chinese government, to try and make up for this, has slashed taxes on companies and devalued the currency to try and kind of correct some of these damages. Um, However... It is important to know that a lot of these were natural changes that were happening in China anyway. Um, Chinese wages were increasing, they were getting more skilled labor, so American companies were kind of already starting to move out of China 
anyway. So, and Chinese economic growth has been slowing over the past couple of years. So a lot of this was kind of just more of a natural change that was just emphasized and heightened and made worse by the trade war. Um, and China has been less affected than the U.S. by this trade deal, in part because of the government's control over the economy and the government's ability to kind of uh, help out the Chinese companies and the Chinese economy, and also because of uh, import substitution. China couldn't import as much to the U.S. anymore, and so they've been able to find other places to import their goods to, which has kind of helped them make up for the damages caused by the trade war. So this is a graph showing the export of goods for China and the U.S. from 2015 to 2019. So as we can see, uh, after 2016, uh, both sides, both China and the U.S., drastically increased in their export of goods. And then right at 2018, drastically dropped off again. And this is the same for the import of goods. Again, really increased and then a sharp decrease after 2018. Um, which is obviously when the trade war started. So what are the effects on the global economy and on the world? So as I mentioned previously, other, manuf other manufacturing countries um, besides China, especially in Southeast Asia, have seen an increase in American investment and in American companies moving their manufacturing to these companies, um, which, as I stated before, was kind of already happening anyway, but just kind of happened a lot faster due to the trade war. And um, during a trade war, especially between the two largest economies in the world, the global economy as a whole grows more slowly um, and so we're seeing that happen with this trade war, the general economy of the world is being affected and is growing slower because of this. Um, another effect is policy uncertainty. So because the tariffs are kind of back and forth, increasing, sometimes decreasing, and different sectors all the time, people don't know if there's going to be a tariff on a certain product or on a certain company on a certain manufacturing in the next year, in the next few months or whatever. And so people don't invest as much and so they're saving their money rather than investing it into economies, which hurts economies. Um, in a study by the Federal Reserve Bank, um, we're seeing that these global tensions, this tension between the U.S. and China, um, could possibly cut global GDP growth by 1%. Um, and so this trade war really is affecting the entire global economy, not just the U.S. and China. Um, and there's also been an average tariff rate increase for the world and um, tariffs tend to damage economies more than help them and so this could be potentially more damaging for the global economy. So some analysis on this is while the trade war was supposed to help the U.S. economy. That is why Donald Trump started this trade war was because he wanted to help U.S. manufacturing and U.S. companies, but we're actually seeing opposite consequences. Instead, U.S. companies have had to lay off more workers. They've lost profit. The U.S. GDP has been lowered. And so with a trade war, we're actually getting opposite consequences of the ones that we wanted in starting it. And 
uh, there's been increased diplomatic tensions between the U.S. and China, um, which can really hurt because the U.S. kind of relies on China to be an intermediary in their negotiations with North Korea. And so these increased diplomatic tensions could have adverse effects on negotiations with North Korea and those relationships. Um, as well as the overall global effects, the trade war is not just affecting the U.S. and China. It's hurting the U.S. mostly. Uh, China still hurting fairly well, but um, not as much as the U.S. And while the global economy isn't as involved, it's still being affected by this trade war. Um, the U.S. and China are the two biggest economies in the world currently, and so tensions between them have ripple effects over the entire world um, as trade is um, increasing in some places, decreasing in some places. It's really changing how the global economy is functioning. And this trade war started two years ago, and so it's kind of hard to tell what the long-term implications of it are going to be, especially because it's not even really over yet. So we don't know, no one really knows what's going to happen in the long term, what is going to be the overall outcome of this. It, so that is kind of a really touchy subject, is that we can see the now effects, we can see what it's doing to economies now, but as for how much it could damage the global economy, the U.S. economy, the Chinese economy for years to come, we don't know. There's kind of no way to predict that because we've never really seen a trade war like this, of this um, between two powerful economies like this before. So in conclusion, the trade war, honestly, is just kind of too new to fully understand the implications of what is going to happen. We can see what's kind of happening now. We can make a few predictions about maybe what might happen. But in all honesty, it's just kind of too new to really see what the implications are going to be, especially since it appears that President Trump really has no intention of backing down. He said that he has wanted to actually increase tariffs more and kind of continue the trade war. Um, however, as kind of a sidebar, um, we've just seen that President Trump has lost re-election, so... Um, it's kind of unclear if Trump is going to try and push through more tariffs, maybe, before he leaves, uh, like, officially leaves office, or um, what the president-elect Joe Biden is going to do with tariffs once he gets in office. He's kind of come out against it, but it's kind of hard to know for sure what, um, is going to happen within the next few months. But overall, the trade war is likely to be damaging, um, at least for the next couple years to both economies until possibly they can recover um, the U.S. more than China, as we've seen. But um, with Joe Biden, we it's there's definitely a huge possibility that we can form a trade deal we can reopen negotiations for that or we can you know really cut tariffs um so that is definitely a possibility um and so if that happens that would make it more likely that the damaging effects could at least lessen um even though honestly we really don't know the full long-term implications of this but um if it was possible for us to form a trade deal to cut tariffs that would 
very likely be helpful to these economies and the manufacturing sectors that have really been hit by this. But um, unfortunately, that does kind of leave us with a sort of question mark because we don't know what's going to happen. We don't know what's going to happen in the next few months. We don't know if tariffs are going to continue to increase. We don't know how the pandemic is going to continue to affect the economies. So it will be interesting to see, I guess, what the long-term implications of this trade war are really going to be on the U.S., on China, and on the global economy as a whole. Thank you.